So obviously, Elizabeth Warren did not perform very well in New Hampshire, and a lot of people, I think, rightfully realized that this was a must-win state for her. I mean, New Hampshire is Massachusetts' neighbor. Demographically and theoretically, you should be able to pull out a win here, or at least come in second, but she finished in fourth place. So if you can't finish in at least the top two or three, if we're being extra charitable, in a race that should be a cakewalk for you, I just don't know how you're going to have a clear path to the nomination. And if I were Elizabeth Warren, I would see that the writing's on the wall and I would be trying to unite the progressive wing of the party. Sure, there was that spat between her and Bernie Sanders, but if I'm thinking about the future and getting my agenda implemented, I would be trying to unite the party. And, you know, she could be trying to position herself for a spot in Bernie's administration or to be the running mate. And even, you know, beyond that, she could position herself currently to run again in 2024 or 2028. But what she's doing now is the opposite. And her behavior makes no sense to me, but it's not shocking. So rather than trying to unite the progressive wings so we can beat the centrists, she's choosing to not only attack Bernie Sanders again, but attack his supporters. Supporters, mind you, that she will need if she somehow were able to pull out a win and become the nominee. Take a look. But the fight between factions in our party has taken a sharp turn in recent weeks. With ads mocking other candidates and with supporters of some candidates shouting curses at other Democratic candidates. These harsh tactics might work if you are willing to burn down the rest of the party in order to be the last man standing. They might work if you don't worry about leaving our party and our politics worse off than how you found it. And they might work if you think only you have all the answers and only you are the solution to all our problems. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like there's a lot at stake and we have to be relentless in pushing back against the corporate propaganda being espoused by other candidates like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden. He lies about Medicare for All. Amy Klobuchar says that Medicare for All means that we're taking away health insurance from people. Are we supposed to just not say anything, not respond, just be quiet as they lie about a policy that would save lives? So forgive me if once in a while we get a little bit rowdy and, you know, we become less civilized and we post rat emojis under Pete Buttigieg or snake emojis under you. You know, if I'm running for president, I'd rather some other candidate supporters post snake emojis underneath every one of my tweets than have another candidate just like lie and say I'm a sexist or imply I'm a sexist. Elizabeth Warren makes no sense to me. I, I don't get it. And look, the sad thing is that in the beginning of this campaign, she was running a pretty phenomenal campaign. It wasn't perfect, right? But she had this tagline, I've got a plan for that. And I thought that that was really persuasive. It was policy oriented. And when you focus on the issues, you can excel. You demonstrate to voters that you know what they need and you're a serious person. Now, there was some blind spots, right? She had a plan for everything but Medicare for All. But then she started to adopt Medicare for All and was a champion for it. She wasn't necessarily the best representative for it, but nonetheless, she still said, I'm with Bernie Sanders. And now look at her. And I don't know what lane she's trying to carve for herself. I think that Sean put it best on Twitter. He said, Warren shift to the center in a field packed with centrist candidates and ones without the progressive baggage of attacking billionaires and the likes was surely a bad move. Wonder what was going on there. I'll tell you what went on. She hired... More and more Hillary Clinton alum and Obama operatives, and now she's basically indistinguishable from most centrists. She's not talking about how she has a plan for everything or big structural reform. She's talking about how many selfies she takes. She's talking about the Democratic Party's core values, whatever that will mean. <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad. And she doesn't realize that being progressive is the ticket. That's her lane. You can't pick a lane and then change lanes late in the game, right? Like she started to slide when she moved away from Medicare for All and her supporters will say, look, all these Bernie bros are lying about her. She does support it. She split it up into two different pieces of legislation. Everybody with a brain knows that 
a sitting president will become less popular as their term goes on. So if you think that she's going to get it passed in her third year and she's able to survive her midterm, her first midterm, and not lose the House or the Senate, you're delusional. So that was a political maneuver to make sure she can move away from Medicare for All, but at the same time still have plausible deniability and say, I support it. No, we have to read between the lines. We have to see that these candidates, they are taking political positions for purposes of political expediency, and they will do what they need to do if they think that's going to help them win. Elizabeth Warren is a politician like everyone else, and she's no different, and we're seeing that right now. And on top of that, the things that she says here don't even make sense to me. She says, um, these harsh tactics, these attacks might work if you're willing to burn down the rest of the party in order to be the last man standing. Except, you know what? I kind of do want to burn down the rest of this fucking party, Elizabeth Warren. Half the party, more than half actually, they're just rank corporatists. They take money from Wall Street. Multinational corporations. We get nothing. So how could you not want to burn down the party? Donald Trump was elected in 2016 because what people wanted was to throw a brick through the glass of the establishment's house because nothing was working. They tried Obama. So now they're trying Trump because they're desperate, their wallets aren't getting fatter, and they're more susceptible to radicalization. So a demagogue was able to take advantage of them. Like, how could you not want to burn down the rest of the party? This party is fucked. Who supports Democrats? Who's enthusiastic to be a Democrat? I'll tell you who. Less than a quarter of the population. Because when you look at public opinion polls, more people identify as an independent than they do Republican or Democrat. So nobody gives a fuck about party loyalty. I couldn't care less about Democrats versus Republicans. I want good policy that helps people. That's it. I don't care about, you know, the Democratic Party. This party has fucked us through and through. So if you think that I didn't give a shit about them, I don't give a fuck. I want policy they're not delivering. So burn it down if we have to burn it down. That's the way I feel, Liz. And the fact that she doesn't acknowledge that, she doesn't acknowledge that voters are desperate currently, shows how out of touch she is. And it shows that all of these people who she hired are ruining her campaign. Why would you hire Hillary Clinton alum? They are losers. Why would you hire Obama operatives? When you yourself took issue with Obama, don't you think that that's going to influence you? I mean, she, you can see the way that she is influenced by the people who are advising her. They are the dumbest people ever. Anyone who is advising Elizabeth Warren should never have a job in politics again because she took a viable campaign. She was the front runner at some point. And they just threw all of that in the trash because she couldn't possibly defend one progressive position of Medicare for All. How pathetic is that? I don't know if it's because she's forming some type of VP deal with Pete Buttigieg or Amy Klobuchar. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going through her head. But all I know is that the people who are advising her are misleading her. They're taking her in a horrible direction. And at this point, I don't even know that she would endorse Bernie Sanders if she dropped out. Like, she might even endorse Klobuchar because I don't, like, I don't know what she's talking about. No substance. There's, there's just nothing there now. She's talking about selfies constantly. It's like what we saw from Kamala when she was about to drop out. She backed away from Medicare for All. And so the only thing that she had and pretended to be passionate about was getting Trump banned from Twitter. That's what Elizabeth Warren is doing now with selfies. And I, I'm trying to not attack Elizabeth Warren and be overly critical because I know there's a lot of supporters of her that could potentially come over to Bernie Sanders and I don't want to drive them away. Like about 40-50% of her supporters say that Bernie Sanders is their second choice. But you've got to understand, as Bernie Sanders supporters, this election is life or death. It's make or break. And what a lot of us see is we're marching straight towards apocalypse, climate catastrophe. And it doesn't matter which Democrat is elected. We're still heading towards apocalypse. We're just going a little bit slower. And Bernie Sanders, and at one point, possibly Elizabeth Warren, seemed like they were offering us this off-ramp, right? So it's like, Bernie Sanders is the life jacket that was thrown to us as we're drowning. And Elizabeth Warren grabs the rope and she's trying to reel it in so we can't grab it. That's the way it feels. And look, I'm someone who, I, like, I don't enjoy hating on Elizabeth Warren or criticizing her. In 2014, I wanted her to run for president. I was part of that nerdy draft Warren campaign because I didn't want Hillary Clinton to be the nominee because, well, look how that turned out. So it's like you want people to believe and you don't want to hate people, right? You don't love to hate people. You want people to believe in. And Elizabeth Warren was one of those people, but I don't believe in her anymore. I don't even know what she's doing. She could be uniting the party. 
Uh, she could be uniting progressives. She could be positioning herself for a Sanders Warren ticket. And she's just slapping us across the face once again. What a disappointment Elizabeth Warren turned out to be. Beta male, not a beta male.